bought with a price Jesus he saved me and he changed my whole life I've been set free free from all sin Jesus restored me gave me peace within I will never know the cause because my Savior paid it all I am time family we are back once again for another opportunity to study God's word I hope you're ready this week because I got another treat for you 
Now, if you've been following our study on worship first, then you know the last couple of weeks I've had some guest ministers on here that have been sharing with us and helping us explore uh, what worship from different from different vantage points. Uh, in the first session, we, we had Dr. Uh, Rachel Davis on, and, and she helped us to understand, you know, personal worship. Uh, and then we followed that up with uh, uh, Reverend uh, John Michael Thomas, who came and shared with us about prophetic worship. Because, you know, when we worship, you know, God wants to speak back to his people. And so he helped us to understand that. But this week, this week, oh, I got another guest for you. It's a special treat. I'm so excited to be here well, with, with Minister <laughs> Melody Frazier. Yes. And, and, and see, I know her as Nikki. You know, I, I remember when she was a little girl running around at the church and everything, her and her brother Keith. And uh, to see them both operating in ministry now and just to see her just operating under the anointing of her parents, ah, I'm just glad I get to be a little piece of that. So um, what we're going to do right here is I'm going to let Minister Frazier introduce herself to you there, and then we're going to open up with prayer, and then we're going to get into some study conversations here because this week is really about public worship. That's what we're going to be talking about. She's going to help us understand what public worship is all about, um, how do we get involved with it, how does she get involved with it. So uh, we're excited to hear from her today. So uh, at this point right here, Minister Frazier, I'm going to go ahead and let you introduce yourself to those who don't know you. Well, uh, good. I'm sure it's good afternoon or good evening by the time you all are watching this. Um, that was a great introduction uh, of who I am um, because I was born and raised, brought up here. Um, but one of the things that Pastor Hardy asked me to speak about is kind of who I am in my private life, private life outside of here. And um, as many of you know, I am a mother. I'm a very, very busy, busy person. Um, I work in corrections. Um, which is um, very, very different because you're dealing with a lot of spirits uh, where I am. And so for me, I work in social services. So I, I oversee probably about 200 people and probably about 100, uh, we call them residents because okay. they reside there. <laughs> they don't get to leave. And so um, to find that balance between ministry and church and motherhood and being a daughter and being a servant, it's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot um, but, I, but what I have learned, what God has brought you to and graced you for, um, you can do it. All you right. just have to lean into his presence. Amen, amen, amen. Well, today we're going to be talking about public worship. And so uh, as we go forth in our conversation, we want you, you know, to really pay attention. And if you would, if you have questions, uh, we really want to hear from you guys. So, you know, type in on, on Facebook and everything, any questions you might have, and we may be able to get back with you a little bit later on that. Um, but we want to get, we want to hear back from you. I mean, significant uh, feedback. Let us know um, how we're impacting you out there. So uh, at this point right here, uh, Minister Frey, would you go ahead and just uh, lead us in prayer as we get started? Father, we thank you for just being God and God alone. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence as believers to seek your word all the more, to seek understanding of how we can worship you, Lord. We thank you for keeping your hand upon us, Lord. We ask that you'll continue to watch over us and keep us and never to leave your presence. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now, I told you, you know, y'all ought to be able to say it in your sleep now. This grow time, this is not Bible read, this is Bible study. So I want you to go ahead and turn to Psalms 29. Okay, and I'm going to read from there as our kind of our meditation, kind of set this whole thing up here, because uh, this is the psalmist, this is David, okay, and, 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 and David, not only was he king, but he's a, he's a psalm writer, and um, so I'm going to read from him right here, and then we're just going to kind of just move in this and then talk about it just a little bit here, all right, and it says there, it says, give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones, give unto the Lord glory and strength, give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes, some, he makes them also skip like calves. Lebanon and Siren like young wild ox. 
The voice of the Lord divides the flames of the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says, glory. The Lord sat enthroned at the flood and the Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Amen. Amen. And that, and that is a powerful, powerful psalm that David has given us. And, and so as a worship leader, you know, what, what, what do you pull from that? And maybe what, what, what should we gather from that? Um, I think verse 2 sticks out the most to me. Um, and then also verse 4. But it says, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name and worship the Lord in splendor of his holiness. And it's funny that you picked this scripture because it's already highlighted <laughs> in my Bible because, you know, you lean a lot as a worship leader on Psalms um, because um, how David wrote all this beautiful music to God. But it says to worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. And that's just looking at God of who he is. Mm. He is holy and to worship him um, to, to a God we've never seen. Right. But to worship just his name and, and who he is and what he brings, it's for me, it's such a reverence of, of God. Um, you know, we, we, we know that the queen has died, yeah. but but God is above the queen. And right. so to see how they're they're putting all these things together for her, um, how more majestic is the God that we serve? And and then verse four says the voice of the Lord is powerful. And the voice of the Lord is majestic. And I think we forget how um, the weight of God is. You know, um, I was listening to a sermon, and one of the things that the pastor said is when God speaks, he don't just speak to one. All right. So I always wondered how these different preachers are always speaking about the same thing in various <laughs> parts of the world. Mm -hmm. But when the Lord speaks, because his name, his voice is so powerful, just one of us not going to hear. Right. His children are going to yeah. hear his voice. And so that's how they all come into alignment of what God is saying amen. in this time. And that's what that speaks to me. Amen. Amen. And I agree with you because, you know, it, it, it's such a, it's a powerful thing. And that when uh, he, but I wondered that same thing many times. I said, God, you know, all these guys are saying the, the same, same thing. thing. Or it, songs. Mm -hmm. Songs start to come out. And they're all about the same thing. Mm -hmm. Favor, mm -hmm. grace, gratefulness. And I'm like, you know, you would almost think they're in competition. Right. But when God is speaking and yeah, his minstrels yeah, yeah. here, yeah. then he, yeah, they're, they're speaking yeah, yeah. his language. Yeah, it's like, it's like like the word is coming out of headquarters. Mm -hmm. Okay, now everybody that's in leadership, everybody on this team ought to be able to hear this word. Yes. You know, yes. and, and that's how you know when you really plugged into the spirit. You know, one of the things when I, when I was meditating on this scripture in preparation for all of this, that really stood up, because I kept talking about the voice of the Lord, the mm -hmm. voice of the Lord, and how powerful it is. And I said, wait a minute. I said, Jesus is the word of God. The voice of the Lord is the word of God. Mm -hmm. So everything he's going to be talking about, he's really talking about Jesus. Yes. And that is so powerful because we, when we don't understand worship and we don't understand who we are in Christ, we don't speak with authority right. and power. Right. And he's telling us here how powerful Help. the word of God is coming from you. That's, that's oh, man. Hey, all them devils are shut just trembling right now. <laughs> they trembling right now. They, that wasn't supposed to come out. <laughs> right, right. So, so, so now when, so when we look at this thing in terms of a background of a worship, you know, it's significant, it's intent. Um, I have reference. I can always go back to uh, what happened in the Old Testament, go back to Exodus 25, because mm -hmm. in Exodus 25 here, and, 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 I, and, and I got it earlier right here. Uh, but in Exodus 25, the first uh, eight verses here, the Lord is speaking to Moses. Mm -hmm. And he's setting this thing up here. And I like this. He says, speak to the people of Israel that they may take for me a contribution. Mm -hmm. Now, see, you know, we don't like to talk about offering in the church, but there it is. The Lord talking about it again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he tells them, take a contribution. Every man whose heart moves him, you shall receive contribution for me. And this is the contribution that you will receive from them, gold, silver, bronze, blue, and purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine, th uh, fine twine, linen, goat's hair, tan, uh, yeah, tan ram skins, uh, goat skins, a cedar wood, 
oil for the lamps, spices for the anointed oil, and for the fragrant and for the fragrant incense, onyx stones and stones of setting for the ephod and for the breastplate. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell in their midst. Just, 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 just talk about that. So um, when you look at this scripture, part of being a worshiper is being a giver because you're giving of yourself. Um, and so you have to be taught that. Like you can't just, you don't just wake up and one day be like, you know what, I'm going to give everything I got. But to be a worshiper, you have to give. You have to give of yourself. Um, and I'm an Old Testament. Like I, you know, I'm like, <laughs> listen, the Old Testament will get you right if nothing else. But um, it's not prescribed to the Israelites um, how much they must give. Okay, okay. Right? It's not, uh -huh. he doesn't say you have to give this amount. But it says that, that basically goodwill of their hearts. How much do you think mm -hmm. is enough? And so for me, uh, what you spend time with is where your money goes. How much you reverence something, how much you think of something is how much you're going to give towards that. Um, if you aren't a giver then the act of worship is going to be very, very mm. difficult mm. because that means you have to give of yourself. Right. And, the, and most times when w what we're talking about today is public worship. Mm -hmm. So that means getting out of my comfort zone because other people are going to see what I'm doing. Um, you know, there's a, there's a thing that I emphasize when I'm at work because I'm talking to so many different people, but even those that are incarcerated, and I have to tell them about their behavior because what you sow, mm -hmm. you reap. And that doesn't mean in a bad way. When you sow good, you reap good, okay. right? right. Mm -hmm. So if you sow uh, money, for me, how I think, finances are going to come back. When you sow good deeds, good deeds just come back. And so for me, I look at this scripture to say, not only do I want you to give, but I want you to give with the right heart. Amen. Amen. And I want you to give with the right heart, but even giving in the right heart as you create this tabernacle, this is what I want in it. He gave very detailed um, uh, directives mm -hmm. of what he wanted the tabernacle to be constructed as and what he wanted in it. Amen, 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 amen. So that get, so we never get away from this thing about giving. We're going to give something. Yeah. If it, if, if it, uh, I think we talked about it last week. If it don't hurt, it ain't worship. Right, right, right. Yeah. So that, you know, so I, I, it, and it's so hard for us because a lot of times when we come to, to church, we just, we say we come into worship. Mm -hmm. But do we really? You know, I, I don't think people really understand uh, what worship is. Um, sometimes from the position that I sit in, um, it's almost like uh, some people are there as a concert mm -hmm. yeah. or as a play mm -hmm. or as entertainment, mm -hmm. right? But corporate worship is everybody, yeah. everybody getting their hearts and their minds in alignment. Um, and part of that is the offerings. Mm -hmm. Part of that is the sacrifice. What you just said, if it doesn't hurt, you ain't giving no sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You're not giving an offering. And so you have to um, program your mind and your spirit to say, I'm coming in here to bring something to God. Amen. Not only financially, but also spiritually, emotionally, my whole inner being. You have to give everything that's um, a part of you to, to really worship God in my eyes. Amen. Amen. You know, and the other thing is, is that because now you, you, you're bringing it together because, you know, God desires, you know, look at the scripture, he says, uh, yeah, verse 8, it says, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell in their midst. So God has a desire to dwell in the midst of his people. And it's, it's seen in, this, in, the, in the sanctuary in the Old Testament, how the whole uh, uh, tabernacle and everything was set up. You know, so where in the middle of that, you know, they they, they had the uh, they had the little sanctuary part right there where God dwelt in the midst of His people. Now, going over to the New Testament, mm -hmm. okay. So so now, how does that equate with our bodies being a temple of the Holy Spirit? So um, our bodies being a temple um, um, is not only in in regards to um, sin, um, but how we take care of ourselves, mm -hmm. how we um, 
ask for forgiveness, what we involve ourselves in, what we participate in, what we expose ourselves to. Um, our bodies um, inhabit his spirit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so for me, I take it literally. So you're telling me that we would come into this place and use profanity? Mm -hmm. Because my temple is holding him. Right, right. My, my body is holding him. So what do I feed myself? Because then what do I feed my God? Mm. Am I feeding him garbage? Mm -hmm. What am I listening to? Mm -hmm. Am I watching garbage? So you're, you're, you inhabit, um, God inhabits within us. So what are we putting in yeah, yeah. That, that comes out? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the drill team back in the day was called the ambassadors for Christ. Right, be like, right. whatever. But when I really thought about that, like in late, later on, I was like, I am an ambassador. Like I carry the weight of God. And so how I carry myself, I'm a representation of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, at my job there, I was like, you always got this stuff on. You got always heels on. You work in a jail. I'm a representation right, of Christ right. wherever I go. And, and we're an heir. That means I'm of royal priesthood. A queen don't walk around All right. not looking like a queen. Oh. So if I inhabit his presence, I'm a representation of him. So what I put into my body, what I feed my spirit, what I listen to, um, everything that I do is in honor of who he is. And not only of who he is, but who he is within me. Amen. Amen. That, that's, that's powerful. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to I'm venture off script just a little bit and I'm going to come back to what you just said. Because you hold a key to something that um, teachers and people who work with in the school districts and the prison systems and stuff like that, um, you hold the key. Okay. Literally. And, and, and so. <laughs> Literally. I have the keys. Boy, that's gonna, but that'll preach. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so, so when you enter into this environment, which is oftentimes considered to be hostile. It is. Okay. Uh, what demeanor, how do you, because you talked about being royalty. So how do you enter in there and not be intimidated and not be, uh, 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 oh, just um, overwhelmed? Yes. Um, I will honestly say my first year, I would say my first six months, I didn't think I was going to make it in this environment. Um, because you are dealing with spirits. You are dealing with very aggressive and volatile people. Um, and you're dealing with um, a lot of resistance and behavior and generational things. Um, and for me, I really had to learn to really pray and cover myself because before you go into a war zone. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. really what it is because you have to stay guarded that you don't know what's behind you, what's coming before you. Yeah. Um, and so for me, I really had to learn to lean into the Holy Spirit before I even walked in there. I would literally pray um, and sit in my car and cover myself before I even opened the keys to get in. Um, and I had to learn to cover the hallways. Mm. And some of my coworkers, um, some of them were not believers. Well, they said they were, but there's no way they could have been. But that's a whole other story. But I really had to pray for them. There were times that um, I felt like I was set up to fail. And I remember this particular time this state had came in, we were doing an audit, and um, my boss did not want to help me. This person just, uh, just didn't want to help me. And I literally said, Holy Spirit, please tell me what page to go to. Tell me where to look at. And the Holy Spirit was like, go to page 53, section B. I was looking around like, <laughs> and it was right. You know, and I knew it wasn't me because I didn't know where to go. This is my first time working in this environment. Um, so I have really learned not only in the church world, but even mm -hmm. the marketplace, the workplace. Yeah. You've got to lean into the spirit mm -hmm. of God no matter where you are. Because I asked the Lord, why would you place me here? Yeah, yeah. Because I don't fit. I clearly don't fit in this environment. All right, all right. All right? Talk to them folk right there. Somebody need to hear what you just said. don't <laughs> fit in this environment. But the spirit... Um, within me told me the minute that you fit, then you're not impactful. Wow. The minute that you're comfortable here, then you are no longer what I need you to be. And that is the light. Ooh. That is the light in darkness. When people are facing um, such disparity and people are sharing um, things that some of these people have gone through, it's unimaginable. But God sent me there to encourage. Wow. 
God sent me there to motivate. God sent me there to plant the seeds that I might not ever see grow. But I realized that he placed me there intentionally Amen. to do his work, even in the, the correction, even in the jail system. Yeah, that, see, that's, that's powerful because I hear, I do some substitute teaching, okay, and work in, you know, kind of a challenging environment at times, and, you know, there's not much respect for the sub. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? yeah, but, 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 um, but people will come back to me, and they keep calling me, you know, can, can I come back and, and, and work there? And say, how come, you know, these kids don't act? Right. Like, way they act with you when you're in the room. And I mean, I'm like, of course, first of all, I don't come in there taking no prisoners. You know, I'm a child of the king. Right. <laughs> okay. So, so I know who I am in Christ. So every spirit in that room knows it's that okay. I know. That's it. You, okay. The line stops here. Now, you come in my classroom, but order will be established. Right, right, right. You right. know, because, you know, the Holy Spirit is in here. I don't know how many angels in here, but they're more than enough that can handle my business. Right, so. right. <laughs> But you know, you have to you have to know how much authority you have. Yes. And as believers, we don't realize how much weight. When I say no, mm -hmm. it's no. Mm -hmm. Like I have to tell some spirits, you know, I can feel the aggression and I'm like, we're not doing that. Right, right. And I and I have that with full authority, not because I'm bigger or badder, but because I know who's on my side. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Amen. And um, I have that same question. Well, you're sitting here with a murderer, and you're going to take him to the gym. I am. Because I know that God placed me to talk to this individual Amen. for a reason, yeah. and he's not going to let danger come up on me. Now, I'm not crazy either. Right, right, when right. I know something ain't right, yeah, you're you going back say to that. those things. That's, that's right. <laughs> right? But um, I would say more often than not, I always say this, I will not work anywhere where I am fearful. So I know that when I speak, I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I really walk with that authority right. wherever I That's go. right. That's right. Amen. 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 You helped a lot of people right there. Amen. Amen. I hope you so. You helped a lot of people right there. Now, I want to go back to this thing. I want to go back to um, our bodies as a temple of the Holy Spirit. Because when I read this, and this is 1 Corinthians uh, 6, 18 through 20. And, uh, and we're in a season in this country here, we really don't seem to get it. So I just, I just want to, you know, touch on this a little bit right here. Because in verse 18, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 18, it says, flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. So it's making a differential here between these sins now. Okay, and a lot of times we just kind of roll right over this. It said, but the sexual, it says, the sexual immorality, a moral person sins against his own body. Now, and I'm like, man, okay, so all these other sins, lying, cheating, and so forth like that is outside the body. But when you talk about sexual immorality, you're sinning against yourself. Right. You're bringing death against yourself. It says, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. And right. that's the part that gets me. You are not... I don't have a say so about how I'm going to treat my body. Right. I don't care what the government and everybody else say right there. God said, I'm not my own. And that's just powerful right there. He said, you've been bought with a price. Mm -hmm. you know? So, so when, you, when, when you look at that and you realize you've been bought with a price and God is saying, you know, glorify God in your body. Now, as a worship leader. Before you come up here on this, on this platform and stand before the people under the lights, what do you do to prepare yourself? Um, so it starts before Sunday. It starts before Saturday. Um, it is my life. It is a lifestyle. Um, and it is very hard. I... I to any believer, being a, being a believer, being a worship leader, it is hard because it comes with a lot of self-discipline. Mm. I just can't do what everybody else does. Right. Um, and that's isolating um, because you want to hang out. You want to kick it. You know, you want to enjoy and do some of the things that you see other people doing. But because I was bought yeah. with a price, uh -huh. then it has to be, I can't go. Or not only can you not go, then you go through the not even being included. <laughs> like you don't even make the guest list right, no more. Right, it ain't right. she ain't going, or we don't even want her to go. Do you take she it a, personal? She a preacher. I used to. Okay. 
I don't anymore as I've matured because I understand there's just some things you can't do. Yeah. Yeah. Case in point, um, I went to a friend of mine's birthday party that was at a club, and I was like, they always come and support me at my church stuff. I can do this, right? So I was like, I'm going to go late, I'm going to leave early, but I'm going to show my face. Mm -hmm. So I go to the club, and I'm sitting there, and I'm and someone says, you're Minister Melody. <laughs> I was like, I got to go. Right, but there's just some things I can't do, and that was yeah. and that was a prime example that even if I'm not doing anything, even if I wasn't drinking, even if I wasn't there, still I was bought with a price, and I'm an ambassador, and I'm a representation. So there's just some things you can't do. I don't belong to the world. Amen. Amen. I belong to God. So even when you do go, you just don't fit. Because it ain't where you're supposed to be. Yeah. There's just some things that you just can't indulge in because you were bought with a price. And because you're bought with that price, you carry the glory of God. Mm. So that means mm. even in the club, the mm -hmm. light's still on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even in the jail, the light is still on you. Even as a sub, the light is still on you. When you're in the grocery store, when you're walking around, the light, I have homeless people. I love homeless people. They're just attracted to me like magnets because I don't see them as homeless. I see them as that could be me. Mm. I see them as that could be my son. I see them as maybe a bad choice, a bad decision. And some of us are all just a paycheck away. You know that's right. From being there. Mm -hmm. So be careful how you judge, right? But for me, because I am purchased with a price, I don't want his I don't want it to be a bad, a bad purchase. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So I make Ooh, sure good. that I try yeah. to do what is right in my private life because what's in your private life transcend, transcends to your public worship. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't worship him privately, if you don't worship him with an audience of one, it is very difficult to sit in here and lift your hands mm -hmm. if you don't lift your hands at home, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, for me, it's a lot of devotion okay. and meditation. Um, one of my girlfriends calls it spa music but I listen to music that doesn't have words because for me, I hear God through that. Okay. Um, and so it puts me in this place of reverence because it calms me down. I don't think about what happened with the boys. I don't think about what's happening in the jail. I don't think about what's happening in church. It's just me and God. Um, I spend a lot of time in my word. Um, I spend a lot of time just in prayer and listening to, to worship music. Now, I'm not fixing to sit up here in front for the saints. I do listen to other music um, because you got to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But I also know a lot of the music that is current, I can't relate to. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. like, we just not going to listen to that. Mm -hmm. Like, you just not going to call me that. You know what I mean? Um, but I also need to understand what these kids, what my kids yeah. are listening to um, so that I can so that I can address it. Yeah. Because you can't address what you don't know. Come on now. Um, but I spend a lot of time just trying to be in God's presence so that I can hear from him because we can practice something on Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, and the musicians get mad at me because Sunday morning the Lord may say, okay, y'all practice that, but I want you to minister this. Mm -hmm. So I, am I obedient to the Holy Spirit? Am I obedient to the people that I know are going to be upset because I changed the music? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with the spirit. Right. That's right. just that's just what it is. Amen. Amen. Man, that's a that, that that's good stuff. You said bad purchase. I don't want it to be a bad purchase. Hmm. Powerful. Powerful, powerful, powerful. You know, I I I have made a lot of mistakes in my life. A lot. Um I had children out of wedlock. Everybody at the church know we ain't going front. Um and it was very embarrassing um, to be raised um, the way that my parents did was such a sacrifice, but to still make bad choices. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I wanted to do was um, to get married and to do it right. So I was like, okay, I, I, I've um, finally forgiven myself for having the children out of wedlock and I get married and I'm going to do this right because I want God to be pleased with my life. Like, I can get it right, God. I can. And to get it right, but it still ended wrong. Mm. And the Lord had to remind me that it's not always about just getting it right and getting it wrong. It's your heart towards me Amen. in the process of it. In the process of everything. 
did you still acknowledge that I'm God? Even in your wrong, I'm still God. Did you repent? Did you ask for forgiveness? But did you pick yourself up and still move forward mm -hmm. in what I've called you to do? Or did you sit embarrassed and ashamed and put yourself in this prison mm -hmm. that I never put you in because I forgave you? Okay. And so for me, when I say I don't want him to make a bad purchase, you can't count up all your wrongs, right? Because you'll put yourself in this box that you're not worthy to worship. Yeah. You're not worthy to serve. But you put yourself in a posture of, I get to serve you. I get to worship you. You've given me another chance and another chance yeah. and another chance. And I'm still going to use you because you're my son. Amen. You're still my child. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's strong. That's strong. Because a lot of people have disqualified themselves yes, because of their history. Yeah. You know, well, if that be the case, then none of us are qualified. Right. You know, so so to, to, to hear you say that and, and, and to bring that forth and then to be able to see you operate with such anointing, you know, lets us know that, you know, God, see, he will heal your wounds. Mm. You know, he'll bring you back to a place of, 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 of service because your heart is right. And that reminds me of David. We, we know we know David. David yeah. messed up a few times. He did a lot. He did a lot. <laughs> you know, but yet God said he was a man after his, his own, own heart. heart. You know, and I think for, you know, for those that are watching us right there, maybe you've disqualified yourself from ministry, maybe disqualified yourself from just talking to people in general about the goodness of God. And God wants you to open your mouth. He'll heal your pain, you know, but he wants you to open your mouth and never stop being a witness for him. So that's that's powerful. I'm, I'm so, you know, thank you for sharing it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing it. That is that is so beautiful. Is there is there a particular scripture that may be your favorite? My favorite is Psalm 68 and okay. 32. And it just simply says, uh, sing to God, O kingdom of earth. Sing praises to the Lord, to him who rides the ancient skies above and who thunders with a mighty voice. Proclaim the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel and whose power is in the skies. You are awesome, O God, in your sanctuary. Mm -hmm. That, for me, it just covers it all. The skies, the earth, it just covers it all. And then the last part that says, in your sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I come into the sanctuary, and the sanctuary is not just this building. Right, it right. may be your home. It may be wherever you reverence and give. But for me, that's where I feel the most vulnerable, but also the most safe. Amen, amen, amen. You know, now, uh, Nehemiah, Nehemiah. In, uh, in the eighth chapter. And uh, when you read that, and especially the first through the twelfth verse, um, it gives us a sense of what it means to be in church, I would put it, right there. Because it, in there, you know, it, it, it describes basically a pulpit set up, mm -hmm. the, the role of the, of, of the priest and the leader and everything, and they're ministering to the people. Yes. They're reading the scriptures before the people. They're admonishing them. And, then at, a, and at a certain point, it, it, it says that, you know, after he, they've admonished them, he said, now, I don't want you to grieve. Right, right. You know, in other words, I want you to celebrate. Right, joy. Sure. Okay. And so, so what, when, when you leave service, okay, after you have you, you, you've ministered to us and you minister to the Lord, okay, what, what, how do you know? When do you feel good about what, what happened? Um, when I've done what I felt like the Lord has asked of me. Okay. Um, you can't measure somebody's worship mm -hmm. because it's their heart. My job weekly is to create this atmosphere that people will want to worship. And so for me, I look at, um, did I proclaim his name? Mm -hmm. Did I exalt him? Um, did I create this safe space where you kind of lose time that you have to stop what you're doing in honor and reverence of God? And so for me, when I feel his presence, then I feel like I've done what God has asked of me. Now, my flesh mm -hmm. 
struggles with that weekly because I wonder, did they get it? Did I do the right song? Did I say the right words? You know, you go through this checkbox of, you know, um, critiquing yourself. Yeah. And then I have to remind myself, but was my heart towards him? Mm -hmm. Because I may not ever see the people change. Did I do what was required of me? And I will get this piece that it is well. Amen. And, Amen. and you get another opportunity to do it again, to, 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 to try again. And so um, some Sundays are easier and some Sundays are harder because there's definitely a struggle. There's mm -hmm. definitely tension. Um, but um, with time, you learn to weather those Sundays um, because some are harder than others. But uh, glory be to God, um, you do the very best. I try to do the very best that I can. Um, because, you know, sometimes I remember um, someone was uh, critiquing me and their response was, well, you don't smile. You don't look happy. You know, you, you act like you don't want to be here. And then I had to remind them, my dad just passed. Yeah, yeah. And my family doesn't get a Sunday off yeah. to mourn. Amen. We don't get a Sunday off to grieve. So were the smiles always there? Sometimes they probably weren't. Mm -hmm. And so it helps me to be mindful of that because you don't know what other people are going through. Um, and so you just try to hit the mark every Sunday. Amen. Amen. Now, you mentioned, you mentioned your dad. And, and, and we know your mom. In fact, I'm going to have on next week. <laughs> we <can't. laughs> so, But can you just speak a little bit about what they poured into you? Um, my, my upbringing, my childhood was very, it was good. Um, you know, it's funny that I work in social services because I didn't know that CPS existed. I didn't know that jails exist. Like, I just, I, I just wasn't exposed to that. Um, I can remember as a little girl, I mean, early four or five years old, my dad playing, the, my dad sitting me on top of the organ and singing hymns to me. Mm. Um, playing playing music. Um, there were always um, church musicians in our home, so I always heard music going 24 hours a day. I mean, I am a official church baby. I could sleep through <laughs> drums, piano, organ. I mean, the whole nine. I grew up with two pianos and an organ and drums every day. So there was never not music or something like that going. Um, my dad was a deacon. My mom was a deaconess. Um, my dad was a lover of education, um, and my parents, we were just church people. So for me, it was foreign for someone to say they weren't going to church. Mm -hmm. I was like, what, what do you mean? Um, anyone that came and spent the night at our house, going to church. Um, and what I will say um, that I am very appreciative of my parents was there was a balance. Like, I still went skating. I still went to parties. I still went. Now, my daddy took me and mm -hmm. would be outside. When nobody else's parents were there. All right, well, amen. But, but they did allow me to participate and go to those things because they realized there had to be that balance. Right. Um, and so for me, um, I swore I would never be back at Mount Pisgah. I would never <laughs> sing in the choir again. I mean, me and Keith had this pact. We ain't never coming back. And yet, here we are. <laughs> here we are. Um, but in the Old Testament, it talks about the, the, the Levites and the priesthood. Mm -hmm. And it was family members that that's what their job was, yeah. was to be in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And so I have figured out now that's what my job is, is to be in the sanctuary. That's who I was created to be. And so my parents um, raised me right. Amen. Amen. They raised me to love Amen. The Lord and to fear the Lord, and it wasn't lip service; right. it was in their actions. Amen, amen. Go, parents, man. We need to hear that because we be struggling with the, our kids sometimes. Now I got, I got to see them. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like them bad kids, but uh, you know. But to see, and, and the testimony is that you pour into your children. You know, you know, what you see is not necessarily what you get; it's what you pour into, into them. And so that's powerful. So that, 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 that part of your testimony. And, and, and this is where I want to talk to you because we did a, we, like I had something to do with it. Uh, Mount Pisgah did a, a project. 
a CD project, yes. Worship at the Rock. Oh, Lord. And, uh, and there's a song on there that I, I just love. It's called Created to Worship. And I remember you giving when we were first uh, uh, doing the first, I guess, concert with mm -hmm. it. And you got up and you gave a testimony from that song. And, oh, man, it just blessed, just blessed me. <clears throat> Woo. I feel it even now. <laughs> can, you, can you speak that created to worship? Because you talked about your name being Melody. Yes. Um, I did not like my name growing up. Um, I thought it was Caucasian. I never heard anyone's name Melody, you know, and um, I did not like, I did not like it. And so um, I preferred to be called Nikki. Um, I was actually Nikki Pooh after winning the pool, but they <laughs> dropped the pool as I got older and it was just Nikki. But nonetheless, I did not like my name. And um, when I talked to my parents about why they named me that, um, I was so ashamed and embarrassed for not liking my name. Um, my parents have been together since they were, to my understanding, 14 and 16, and they've been playing together for years through high school and, and on going, off again, on again. Um, but they named me Melody because that was the love between them, was music. Mm. Um, and so Created to Worship came um, after a rehearsal when we were on Web Chapel, and me and a musician who will remain nameless uh, was talking very bad about my dad. Um, and I really wanted to get him. Like, I really wanted to say some words that, that were not Christ-like. Um, but I didn't. For whatever reason, the Lord stopped me. Mm. And I went home and... Um, I started just writing and scribing, and, and, and that song was birthed out of anger. It was birthed out of, um, you know, the, the person at the time was younger than me, and I was starting to really realize um, that one day I'm going to get old. And to have reverence for elderly people, to have reverence, because my dad was aging and he was starting to do you know, repeating itself, you know, as people get older, it just comes along with it. Um, but the disrespect was, which is what upset me. Um, and so the Lord told me, you weren't created to use profanity. You were created to worship me. You were created to sing my songs. Um, and so there I started writing the song and I wrote the song like two years prior to us even having the CD. And my songs weren't for anybody to hear. These were just my songs mm. with the Lord because I never felt like they were good enough to, to, for anybody else to hear. Um, and so when um, my mom kept asking the musicians, I want y'all to submit a song, submit a song. I was like, I ain't submit nothing. And, and so I was like, okay, I, I, I'm going to submit it. And they said, okay, it's a good song. And I was just like, oh, no. It's like, <laughs> I don't want to do it. And so... Um, that's how created to worship. That's how created wow. to worship came. Yeah, man, that's that, that, that's that's strong. That's strong right there. You know, because uh, ever since you know, I heard your testimony on this. It really changed the way I looked at myself. It really changed how I interacted with God, and it really changed how what I my purpose in life was when you when you sum it up all together and 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 in, I believe what the Lord really wants all of us to really see and understand is is that we are all created to worship you know our whole life is a worship whatever we do and and and, and, and uh, I'm just going Nikki as, as she shared um it's a, our whole life, our whole totality of what it is that we do, you know, is, part, is, is, is worship unto the Lord. And, and, and if we keep that as our focus, um, then God can even do greater things because as, as you remember from last week's study, God does desire to talk mm -hmm. to his people. He does. Yeah. 
you know. And, and, and you demonstrated how many times the Lord spoke to you and, and talked to you and guided you and stuff. Even, you know, when things were challenging and so forth right there, he still wanted to speak to you, you know. And that's, that's so powerful. Because a lot of times we shut down. When we're going through, we shut down, we isolate, and we don't allow God to speak to us. But if we ever going to get delivered, then we need to hear what he's got to say. You know, so that's, that's just, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing you know, that. I think Isaiah 43 and 21 sums it up for created to worship because it says, um, the people I form for myself that they may proclaim my praise. Mm. That means he created us to praise him. Yeah. He created us to worship him. Yeah. And, you know, something you said a few minutes ago that we're here to do his work. Yeah. We're here to, you know, our whole lives, everything that we go through, it's not to defeat us. It's not to break us. Um, had I not had my boys, though a bad decision, I would not be able to really intercede and understand a single mother's stressors. I would not be able to, um, I can, for me, I can hear cries. And so I can definitely hear the cry of grief, but I can also hear a woman's cry. And had I not gone through those things, mm -hmm. I would not be able to hear prophetically and spiritually the things that I hear. But sometimes you have to go through the bad times for God to grow you yeah. and for your worship to be even more authentic because sometimes it can be so bad you don't have nothing else but worship. Mm -hmm. You may not have a dollar to your name, but I can sing your praise. Amen. You may not be able to figure out how the bills are going to be paid, but I can lift my hands in your sanctuary and, and not know what the end is going to be, but I know you're with me. So that means I know you're going to have a plan. Amen. I know you got a plan. I just got to be able to hear mm. what your plan is. Amen. That's good. That's good. That's good. Now, um, as we get ready to wrap up, you're a preacher too. And I saw one of your videos of you preaching. <laughs> you know, t t tell these folks a little bit about your preaching side. Um, so for the last, I would say, eight or nine years, I've had a, a woman's Bible study. The last three years, it has been monthly. So I have a rave women's Bible study that is encompasses of women all over the world. Mm. Um, and it's great because um, we don't know each other personally, but they'll get the link. And I call it a rave because we just pop up and do it. Um, so, um, for me, the rave is, it's intentional that you're going to get on. Okay. Right? Because you don't know what time it's going to be, but it means you're going to stop what you're doing and get on this lady's Bible study. And we talk about some of the most, you know, a lot of times we don't talk about some stuff that really goes on. We don't talk about it in church. Yeah, yeah. Right? We don't talk about domestic violence. We may skirt over it preaching, but we don't talk about how do you love someone that you have a child with that you don't like. Come on now, come on. How do you stay in a marriage with someone that you don't know if you're in love with them? You love them, mm -hmm. but are you in love? And mm -hmm. how do you get that back? So we talk about those, those, those kind of things. Um, being a preacher it has been since 2019. Um, it is something that I struggled with for 10 years. Okay. It's something that I struggled with that honestly, um, at the time, Pastor T was like, no. I don't believe in that. You ain't doing that. Thank you for coming to talk to me about it. God bless you. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Um, but there was still this push that I was a preacher. And I'm like, I'm not. That's unheard of here. Right, right. right. Um, but as you start to expose yourself, then you start to see these women. I started to see women preachers, and I was like, oh, I don't even believe in women bishops and women, because that was just something I've never been exposed to. And I will honestly say there's still some things I'm on the fence about mm -hmm. as a woman, mm -hmm. but I respect anybody in their position. Mm -hmm. I'm not to judge. It's just my own convictions. Right. There's just some things as a woman I'm, I'm not with, mm -hmm. right? And I, maybe I'll grow to it. Maybe I won't. 
but I don't knock anybody that is in right. these different positions. Um, so being a preacher for me, I take it very, very seriously because, again, I believe in this Old Testament that if you came before the Lord wrong, you know, he would just strike you dead. <laughs> I believe in that, and I don't want that. I don't want that blood on my hands. But I take the word of God very seriously. So for me, um, when I preach, um, I go through a very intense study, and I think uh, I stress myself out quite a bit because, again, I don't want to let God down. And the platforms, when he allows me the opportunity to preach, um, I want to proclaim his word in an honorable and respectful way that it causes you to think. Um, I'm great with clapping and bucking and shouting, and all that's good. But the meat of it, mm -hmm. what do you leave with? Yeah. Do you leave with a thought? Do you leave change? Do you leave encouraged? So um, I was told... Um, when you become a preacher, Mel, you're going to have to pick one or the other. And I was so hurt by that because I was like, no, I, I finally have embraced being a worship leader. Um, but being a preacher comes with a different weight. Mm -hmm. It comes with a different um, application. It comes with a different study, a different everything. And so learning to find my cadence, learning to find... Um, my delivery, learning, um, because I don't want to be this emotional woman that does a bunch of, you know, I don't want to be that. I want to be seen as a minister, not male or female. I want to be seen as a minister of Christ. And so um, I take the preaching thing very, very seriously. Um, I always get approval before I speak. Um, I have a, um, my mentor, her name is Bishop Anita O'Brien, and she was the first black woman um, bishop in Washington, D.C. Mm. And she's a little short woman. And for 10 years, I, I've gone to the gospel music workshop for about 17, 18, 19 years. And maybe my 10th year, uh, she sat on the front row and she said, you, come here. And for 10 years, she said, what are you doing with your ministry? And I was like, oh, I'm supporting my husband. What are you doing with your ministry every year? Oh, I'm, I'm doing this. She's like, okay. You're a preacher. And I said, oh, no, I'm not. And we went back and forth. Mm -hmm. She said, I smell preachers. You're a preacher. <laughs> and I was like, this little lady is crazy. I ain't got to see her but once a year. But finally when I told her, she said, I told you. You were a preacher, and now it's time. And so um, I'm excited. God has opened some opportunities for me, be, for me to be able to go and preach. And... Um, it's scary, but I, I do enjoy it. Amen. I do enjoy Amen. it. Amen. Amen. Good stuff. Good stuff. There's a, a, a book, and I gave it to you there, called Majesty by Jack Hayford. And he really talks about the minister and the worship leader, the pastor and the worship leader, really. The minister, the pastor, he's supposed to be the leader of the worship. Right. And sets the tone for everything. And uh, it makes a difference. It makes a difference in the people. So, uh, I would like to share one thing before we close. Sure. Um, worship is an action word. It is an action word. And so that means that there is a sound. There has to be something. Um, and when you come into corporate worship, you have to come just like in the book of Acts where they came together yeah. and they were one. And so, you know, what I would like to um, impose upon the people that are listening to this and hopefully you will share it is that when you come to worship you have to come intentional with the mindset that you're we're here to do one thing mm -hmm. and that's exalt God Amen. that we are here to come together to lay everything at this altar and focus on one thing and that's God because when you make this sound his presence has to come. Amen. In Revelations 4, it says that uh, the 24 elders yeah. are there all day and all night saying, holy, 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 right? That means 24 hours a day, this is what God is hearing. And if God is there hearing, that means his presence is there. Mm -hmm. So if we're here on earth mm -hmm. and we're exalting his name and we're having this action and we're making this sound, it forces him to come. And in his presence, 
everyone can get what they need if we're all making this sound unto God. I'm not saying the sound of soprano, alto, and tenor. God ain't worried about that. But the sound of I love you, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. It may be a song. It may be a prayer. But if we all have this one mindset, that we're here to exalt the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. His presence will come, and in his presence, everything else can transcend. <laughs> Healing, wellness, holiness, everything. You know, when we think about the sanctuary and going back to it, not only did God give these directives of what it was to look like, but it was also a place of holiness. Yeah. And so when you come into a place of holiness, there's just some things we can't do. And when we can't do them, that means we're turning our mindset that, you know what, I can't talk like this, but I can't lift my hands. I can't speak well of him. I can forget about everything that happened, and I can focus on who he is. So when it's time for corporate worship, not only are you doing it here, but then you start to transcend that at home. Yeah. So that when you come here, it's not foreign. When you come here, I'm not having to tell anyone, lift your hands, because you'll lift your hands because you've been lifting them mm -hmm. Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. Then when you get here, it's like you're not even being prompted. So for me, um, you know, the running joke is she don't need no praise team. She'll shout by herself. <laughs> I will. I have. Because when you just think about everything that God has done, how can you not say thank you? How can you not say hallelujah? How can you not just, you know, just sit in awe of who he is? Because there's some things that have happened in all of our lives that there's no explanation other than God. Amen. You know, life has kicked some of us pretty hard in the stomach, and yet I'm still able to stand here and say, thank you, Jesus. Because what tried to break me, mm -hmm. self-inflicted or not, it didn't kill me. Amen. And since it didn't kill me, you created me to worship you. Amen. And I can do it from a pure place. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, man. Man, man. Well, I, I, I know you got something from today's grow time. I, you, you've had to grow by a couple of feet today because uh, Minister Frazier really shared with us some very powerful things in terms of our growth in, in regards to public worship, in regards to personal worship, and just understanding who we are as worshipers and what we're created to be. And so if that's you and you've heard this, you've heard this word that was shared today, this study and everything, and you being prompted in your, in your, in your soul and it said, I want to know God like that. I want to know him the way those guys know right here. There is going to be some information on the bottom of the screen, okay, that you can contact because we're here at Mount Pisgah. We would love to talk to you and share Christ with you as Lord and Savior, that your worship might be true because you have Christ in your heart. So I just want to pray for you just real quick here. Um, um, and, and you just watching us, maybe you're in your kitchen or maybe you I know you're in your office right now, you know, and just for a few moments, just give me your attention and just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I want to be a real worshiper, Lord. I want to know you and I want to know your voice. Would you save me, Lord? I acknowledge you as King of kings and Lord of lords. As the son of the living God, Lord Jesus, would you please come into my heart and save me? If you prayed that prayer, and you don't have to say it exactly the way I said it, but if that's what your heart said, then you're saved. You're saved. So call us and share. Well, not call us, I should say. Go on the screen, follow the information, and share with us, you know, what God is doing in your life. And we want you to be, we're in Richardson, Texas. Uh, and on Sherman Road, Mount Pisgah Missionary Baptist Church, better known as The Rock. We, we want to invite you here for, for Sunday service. We start at 1030, so we want to invite you into the house. Uh, if you can't get here, then watch us online. All right? So uh, with that, I'm going to ask Sister Melody, would you just close us out in prayer? I will. Um, for those of you that don't know the, the Created to Worship song, 
created to sing, created to love, created to worship my God up above, created to praise with honor and truth. Lord, I'm created to worship you. Lord, I'm created to worship you. So I'll sing of your greatness. I'll sing from my soul. Lord, please use me. Let your will for me unfold. Please manifest your plans and desires for me. Lord, I'm created to worship thee. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for this time to grow. We thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to just be in your presence. And so, God, we ask right now that in this growth time, you will help us, Lord, that struggle in the area of public worship. You will help us to have a spirit of vulnerability and, and sacredness and holiness that will feel safe enough to worship you, God. We thank you for the opportunity that to just love on you and for you to love on us. We thank you, God, that there is spirit and liberty in your presence. And so, Father, I pray right now that every blood-washed believer that is on this uh, Zoom, that's, that's watching us, God, that, that they've learned a little bit more about you and created, Lord, something to learn about you even the more. Lord, I thank you for Pastor Hardy and his heart to teach your people I thank you for those that made the sacrifice to be on today, God. We pray, Lord, that you'll continue to have your hands upon this church and have your hands upon each of us. So in the areas, oh God, that we need to grow, grow us up. In the areas, oh God, where we need to have forgiveness, help us to forgive. In the areas, God, that you want us to be able to give our testimony, let us not be afraid of what people may think but let us focus on what you have done in our lives. We thank you, God, because there is no God above you, that you are the King of kings, you are the Lord of lords, and we will serve and worship you, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Tune in next week. Invite somebody else to tune in as well.